have starborn. Remember to be a star. You have to shine your own light, follow your own path, and not be afraid of the darkness because that's when stars shine brightest. If you've been looking at my website, starborninstitute.org, you'd already know that the title of tonight's show is, <clears throat> excuse me, the title of tonight's show is Playing the Game. And that is because we just had a wonderful new moon yesterday at 21 degrees of Sagittarius. And uh, Sagittarius is a fire sign that likes to have fun. And it is, um, the title Playing the Game is important because it's a description of people that you might want to watch out for, not only now, but in the coming year. And that is because under the full, the new moon yesterday, the sun, the moon, and Mars were all in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is a dynamic fire sign which rules the higher mind. It rules four-year colleges, universities, graduate and professional schools, and it also uh, rules long-distance travel, people from foreign countries, the courts, and it rules international organizations, very big ones. So you may feel sort of as if in one way or another, either you or people you know are under pressure right now to start something new that has universal appeal. Well, that would certainly appeal to a Sagittarian because they're broad-minded people. Um, but I think that your good intentions might run into a little bit of trouble right now because, as I said, the Sun, the New Moon, and Mars were all in Sagittarius. And Mars is a malefic planet. It's very energetic and aggressive. And the problem is they were all being squared by Saturn, and by Neptune in Pisces. And Neptune is the only planet at home in the sign it rules right now. And so it's very strong right there. And Pisces rules deception or omission or things that are hidden behind the scenes. And so there is the possibility that your good intentions could run into a little bit of trouble, even though you do have the best intentions, because of somebody who is an imposter or a phony or someone who's playing the game and is always interested in doing things that benefit themselves, not that benefit the overall good for others. And so you can tell who those people are because people who play the game are, um, they're kind of always willing to claim success and advertise their success, but it isn't really their success. It's the success of other people that worked very, very hard to solve a problem or come up with an answer. And instead, the person who's playing the game can say, well, I'm responsible for that. Well, did they do the work? No. <laughs> They're just claiming success for it. So that's playing the game. <clears throat> and the problem with that is that Mars is one malefic planet and Saturn is another. And Saturn is a planet that rules Capricorn, which rules your 10th house of career and your public reputation. It rules large corporations, government agencies, and institutions. So it's sort of um, people who work their way to the top. But some people do work their way <laughs> to the top. Others are good at playing the game. And you could see some of those people right now because the two malefic planets, Mars and Saturn, are all squaring each other. And that simply means that uh, since Pisces is such a strong sign right now, it's being backed up because Venus is in Scorpio, backing it up, trining it. And, and so um, it's an indication that a phony will be found out or an imposter will be exposed and they can be somebody that is sort of a household name, somebody that you know, we're all familiar with in one way or another, or at least people know about them. And of course they'd have to know about them because these people are so good at playing the game that they're always out there trying to be in the right place at the right time with the right people, uh, claiming success for work other people did. And so actually, this is a time under this new moon that can be sort of a feast or famine time. And that is because of, certainly if you're a person who plays the game, you could be enjoying the spotlight right now, or you could be traveling, or you know, you could be exerting your ego all over the place and having people uh, see you and applaud you right now. 
But instead, what I really think these people who play the game are doing is that they can be involved even at a higher level, an upper management level, in a, a company or a government agency. They could be head of a country or they could be head of an institution. But what they really are is they are a placeholder or they are a figurehead. And you can tell the difference between somebody like that and somebody who really is doing the work because the ones who are very quietly, they're, they're not trying to show off, they're very quietly doing a lot of problem solving or they have spent their lives already being successful because they worked really hard and you can see the results of their success. Those people are the ones that should be getting the credit right now and may be, except that their glory is always bypassed for somebody else who's willing to take credit or be the placeholder or be a figurehead for the very success that somebody else earned. And so you'd want to be a little bit careful who you believe these days. Mars is squaring Saturn. That's not good. That's two of the three malefic planets. And Mars is get up and go and aggressive and Saturn is stubborn and insists that you do everything right. You see, there's two different attitudes there <laughs> that you might run into this week. So uh, somebody's playing the game in all of our lives and it could be somebody who is now exposed in one reason or another. Uh, maybe they were just uh, mingling with the right people and uh, maybe they benefited. People who play the game are in it to benefit themselves, not you and me. And that's the difference. They'll do whatever they, they want to do or say whatever they want to say in order to boost their own egotistical egos. They're, you know, they think rather highly of themselves and if something will benefit them, uh, they'll make sure that the, that the accolades come to them instead of the people that really deserve it. And so um, I had a friend once, a person who was a director on my show uh, years ago in the studio and she liked to play the ponies. And uh, she was a wonderful lady. Her name was Kay Holavas. And uh, her daughter was a horse breeder in Texas. So they, you know, ran in the family. They knew what they were doing with horses. And so whenever I was a little bit undecided about something and thinking about, you know, different people that I work with, uh, she would say, well, before you make a decision, she said, check the track record. And um, she liked to bet on the ponies, and she did always check the track record. She, she watched all the races, the big important races here. And uh, that's what she always said. If you're undecided about somebody, check the track record. And is it the kind of track record that somebody is saying, where they're claiming victory or claiming success because they're, they're always in the right place at the right time with the right people? Or, uh, or is there somebody around that you know that has a track record of steady effort? And, you know, if, even if they make mistakes, they go back and solve the problems. Or, or they've, they've done something that is original and creative. The problem now, and the reason why we can be running into a sort of a feast or famine time, is because there are no planets in the air signs. And so there's, there's no way to have real creative ideas right now. Or have, people can have them, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't be necessarily advertised at this time. And so we're stuck with what we're really looking at. And that's why you really should check the track record of someone before you believe what they say. And all you have to do is look at their accomplishments. And um, by track record, I mean how much time did they spend on whatever accomplishment they're bragging about. Because generally it's the people that aren't bragging about the honors they've won that are the really successful people. And uh, those are the ones you can trust because they've proven their worth. They don't have to advertise it. They've proven it. And so those are the people you can trust. And so I'll, I just uh, thought I would let you know that that's the way that new moon is looking. That at, here at the end of the year, we are probably going to discover somebody who's been playing the game and that they're very good at, but they will be exposed as a phony or as an imposter that has, that has benefited from the, their actions personally.
even if the success was somebody else's. Okay, what does this mean to all 12 of the sun signs? Hmm. Well, Aries, for you, you can be supercharged right now, Aries, because the sun and the new moon and um, Mars were all in Sagittarius trining your sun. Lucky you, Aries. That's wonderful. It simply means that, uh, you know, somebody wants you to uh, enjoy yourself or maybe you're thinking of taking a long distance trip, you ought to do it, Aries. It would work out pretty well for you, as long as you are pretty careful. Um, this is not a time when we should believe everything people are saying. Remember, Mars is square Saturn, and uh, Saturn's in Pisces, which rules things that are illusionary. <laughs> and so uh, we, need to, we need to sort of check and see that people are telling the truth. And if that takes extra time, and. and Fire signs are sort of impatient, particularly in Aries, and they just like to zoom forward. But it might pay you to step back and start checking uh, on what people have honestly accomplished. And perhaps place your trust a little bit more in people who've made quiet but steady efforts. Instead of the ones that are always, you know, benefiting themselves or always praising themselves. And so... Um, just be real careful what you do right now, Aries, because you can be surrounded by people that sort of want to get you going right now and want you to make a new start. And I would seriously consider that, Aries. All you need to do is slow down a little bit and make sure you can trust everybody. That's, that's all I'm saying is check things out. Take a little time to do that now because you have a, a solar eclipse coming up this spring and you are going to start something new. But be a little, take your time in making the choices that you make, just, just to be careful and to be sure. Because no matter how you start, it's equally important how you end Aries. And Aries is not an, a finishing sign. And so, if you, and, and so Aries has the excitement, the pioneering spirit to go forward. And so if you want to keep doing that, Aries, you've got to have trustworthy people that are going to stay behind and keep doing the work. And, you know, you want a different kind of person that you can, can be steady and count on all the time. You know, there don't have to be two of you. There's one of you that is, is out doing the pioneering stuff, and there's somebody else that's really doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And that is something, somebody that you should praise. Because you're not going to get too far without them. So just think about it, Aries. Okay, what does it mean to a Taurus? Mm, Taurus. Well, Taurus, this is a time when you can feel that there just isn't enough to go around right now. Is it that there isn't enough money? Or is it that there isn't enough love? Or there isn't enough time? I don't know what it is, Taurus, but you could feel as if you're sort of not getting what you really want right now. It doesn't mean you're going broke or anything, Taurus. What it means is that Venus is in Scorpio and it is opposing your sun sign. And it is your own ruler that is opposing your sun sign where you have Jupiter and Uranus. And so, uh, Taurus, <laughs> you know, there there could be some money that you were expecting to come in and perhaps quite a bit of it and uh, for sure I don't think there's going to be as much there as you were counting on <laughs> Taurus so maybe that could be a represent a little disappointment to you and why could that be? It could be because of higher costs it could be because of higher taxes and Scorpio rules taxes they take those out first <laughs> darn it <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> I think that you're going to be a little short in the money department somewhere, Taurus. And it doesn't mean that you're out of money or anything like that. It simply means that your costs are going to be a little higher than you were anticipating and you will have to pay them. And so, um, you know, try to keep a smile on your face anyway. Taurus is the sign of the good provider. And it's simply that your ruler, Venus, is opposing your sun, which means that there can be a, somewhat of a demand on your budget to provide for others and, and maybe you're looking at your budget which could be shrinking a little bit and you can't quite provide the way that you generally would like to do. Uh, so that's all right, Taurus. I mean, you, you could be in the same boat as a lot of other people who are finding out that with high inflation and high costs everywhere, it, it is pretty hard to make a budget that stretches. <laughs> everywhere the way it used to. Uh, our budgets aren't doing that. And so uh, just try to be a, a good, a many, 
try to be as good a money manager as you usually are, Taurus. A Taurus doesn't really ever run out of money. Uh, it's just that, you know, you like to have it in the right place at the right time. And I think something's going to be a little short right now. But don't let it ruin your holiday, Taurus. You'll, you'll find a way. Okay, what does it mean to a Gemini? Hmm, Gemini. This is a time, Gemini says, there are no planets in the air signs when you don't have to come up with a creative idea. Nobody's listening to those anyway right now. And also, the new moon, the sun, and Mars yesterday in Sagittarius were all opposing your sun sign. And that simply means, uh, Gemini, that <clears throat> somebody sort of wants to go off and do their thing. Or somebody can be at a distance, maybe even a long distance, and may not exactly be agreeing with you. Or there could be a matter coming up that's a little bit contentious. And if I were you, I'd sure stay out of it, Gemini. You're looking at a wonderful year in 2024. So don't ask for trouble now. And if, if somebody feels like they want to fight with you since Mars is opposing your sun, and Saturn and... Um, Neptune and Pisces are squaring your sign. Uh, yours is a mutable sign. You're caught up in these five planets. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, these five planets that are squaring each other under the new moon yesterday. And so you can simply be a little bit disgruntled that things are delayed or that they're just taking longer. You may, you may discover that, gee, you do one thing, uh-oh, but there's something wrong with that, and you've got to start over and do it again. Um, your sign does rule two of everything, though, Gemini. Uh, Geminis are, are generally so adaptable and so flexible that even starting over and having to repeat themselves doesn't really bother them the way it does most people. Uh, Geminis are very good at making successful adjustments. And uh, that is one of your talents, actually, Gemini. You can successfully adjust to things that would really bother other people. And so you may have to use that talent right about now, Gemini, and begin to adjust to something that you personally think is a bit of a disappointment. But you're, I think you're going to have to keep a smile on your face over the holidays and just keep going, Gemini. All I would suggest you do at this time, since there are two malefic planets squaring and opposing your sun, Mars and Saturn, uh, I, I would try to get a little bit more rest and uh, take it easy on yourself over this holiday if you can. Don't let yourself get too tired or worn out, Gemini. It won't be worth it. I mean, there, there's no planets in air signs. Nobody's listening to anybody else right now. So don't waste your breath. <laughs> Just try to sort of be real cozy and um, enjoy your holiday instead. I think you can. Okay, what does it mean to a Cancer? Well, Cancer. You have some pretty good planets trining your sun right now, Cancer, which is good, although two of them are sort of under attack at the moment. And that is because you have Venus in Scorpio trining your sun, which is very good for you, Cancer. That means there could be some more money coming your way. And it could come from the things that Scorpio rules, since Venus is there. That's a real good planet. And so it could be an income tax refund, it could be an inheritance, it could be an insurance uh, settlement that goes in your favor, uh, it could be a grant of some sort, it could be that you win the lottery, who knows. <laughs> but there can be some more money coming your way. Or you could sell something pretty valuable and that, you'd like to put the money in your pocket, I'm sure, so that would work out as well. So I think you're going to, be a, you're going to enjoy a financial benefit that's coming up cancer and um, you may say to yourself oh I mean you might even be surprised at that and why because it's the kind of benefit that comes from someone who loves you and the, the surprise is that they did really care about you and uh, it, it and I'm sure they still do because they may have decided to, to provide for you in one way or another and um, in, in other words, they were somebody, e even if they're gone now, they're somebody that would have uh, put their money where their heart was. And it looks like it was on you, Cancer. So uh, that's pretty nice. You know, um, we are part of the family of man. Uh, and, and that includes women and children and everybody else out there. But what that means is that the heart doesn't judge. 
you for where you came from or uh, how old you are or what you've done in your life. Um, if one heart cares for another, uh, that's the strongest bond of all, love. And so that's what Venus is. It's the planet of love. And so uh, there may be some more money or something of, of good value coming your way, Cancer. And it's coming from somebody whose heart believed in you or believes in you now or will always believe in you. So that's rather nice. Because uh, actually money can't buy that. Heart to heart, that doesn't have anything to do with money. That has to do with love. And so you could be benefiting from that right now, but the feeling would have been very genuine, the feeling behind it. So that's good. But on the other hand, I told you that um, mm, you need to watch out for those slick people that are playing the game right now, um, uh, Cancer. And the reason why is that Saturn and Neptune in Pisces are trining your sun. Okay, that's, that could be good, but they are beleaguered. Okay, they're not at their best right now, Cancer, and they're not at their strongest, even though Neptune is the strongest planet in the heavens right now because it's the only one at home in the sign it rules. But they are being squared and opposed by the sun, the new moon yesterday, and Mars. Do you see? They're under duress. So even if they're trining your sun, they're having a little trouble right now, Cancer. And that trouble involves people who have been playing the game, who have been placeholders, or figureheads and who are always claiming success that somebody else actually earned uh, so that they can be seen in a benevolent light uh, among the right people at the right time. Figureheads and placeholders are all, all do that. They're phonies and they're imposters. They don't have a track record that amounts to the way they talk. <laughs> Their ego is bigger than anything else. And they're, they're willing to get out and promote it. <laughs> uh, so uh, you could skip those people, uh, Cancer. They're not your type. <laughs> but they're around. And you need to be a little bit careful that they're not trying to come your way because they could. Uh, they don't care who they prey upon as long as it's of benefit to them. And, and that's called being extremely shallow or egotistical. That isn't what a Cancer is. A cancer's for real. A cancer is homey. And so I don't care what, what they're talking or what their a line is. Uh, you need to stay away from those people, cancer. They are really not your type. And I think you probably know people like that, that are placeholders or figureheads and have been successful at that because they work at always being in the right place at the right time, around the right people. Although they themselves have very little to, to prove their worth. Very little. If you took, checked their track record, there would have been more failures than successes. Earned. Okay, so what does it mean to a Leo? Well, Leo. Leo, just like Aries, you could be supercharged right now because the Sun, the New Moon, and Mars in Sagittarius yesterday were trining your Sun. And that simply means you could be off and running right now, Leo. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't mind it at all. One thing you could be doing is traveling, because that's what Sagittarius rules. But you could also be trying to learn new things. Or you could be interested in higher education for one reason or another. Or you may be very involved or, or deeply interested in a court case or, how, or some religious or philosophical controversy that is going around going on right now in the world uh, because um, Sagittarius rules international things and this was a good new moon for you Leo because these three planets trined your Sun now they are in trouble them by themselves even though the Sun and the moon are a lot of light uh, unfortunately Mars was there at the same time and so somebody could be coming right at you, Leo, and saying, hey, let's do this and let's do that. And uh, hey, let's do it right now. And that may throw you a little off course, Leo. You might not be able to you know, make adjustments simply because, one, yours is a fixed sign. That isn't how fixed signs work. They're not, they're not, even if they 
do things very quickly, which fire signs do, fix signs think about it before they go into action. They, they plan things before they go into action. So you could be somewhat surprised that anybody could come along right now, either uh, people from a foreign country or, or people who are visiting you sort of as surprise guests. <laughs> they could do that. And um, I think you're going to have an enjoyable holiday, Leo, but you might be a little busier than you were planning on. <laughs> and that may be on behalf of others. And I don't think there's going to be a way where, that you can get out of that. Uh, so it, you just have to sort of grin and bear it right now, Leo. And yet, if you are thinking, uh, or, or if you are under pressure to make a new start that has universal appeal, you could be very interested in that. And that is actually what the new moon is all about. It's just that there's a huge difference between people who are playing the game and don't have much substance to them and have a poor track record of accomplishment and other people who really are capable of making a new start that has universal appeal. Those people would be a little bit hard to find right now because Mars was in the sign. But um, Leo, you, you could be interested in finding uh, pretty intelligent people right now to perhaps help you with something, and that would be fine. Um, just try to get some rest in between, Leo, because somebody could be punching your buttons a little hard this holiday season, and you know, you, you gotta find some good excuses to get out of a few things and just relax if you can. Okay, what does it mean to a Virgo? Hmm, Virgo. This is a time, Virgo, when I think that you can be um, sort of torn. Remember I said this is a time of feast or famine. And, okay, the feast in your life could be from the fact that Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus are trining your sun. And Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn are also trining your sun. But Mercury is now retrograde. Uh, so there's some business matter that sort of has to be redone in some way, Virgo, or you have to think about it in a little different way. Uh, or you could be a little bit late at attending, uh, in attending to a business matter, and you might have to play catch up with that. Uh, when Mercury goes retrograde, that's always a good time to go back and finish things that didn't get done. So maybe that's what you're gonna to have to do since Mercury is your ruler and it's in Capricorn trining your sun, but it's retrograde or going backward. At the same time with Jupiter and uh, Uranus in Taurus, both of which are retrograde too. There's three retrograde planets. They all trine your sun, Virgo. And you don't have a planet in your sign right now. And all you've got is retrograde planets trining your sun. Well, trine is a very good thing anyway. And so it, it looks to me like you're going to have to backtrack a little bit right now, Virgo. Uh, maybe think over some decisions that you've made before and ask yourself, hmm, is that what I still really want to do? Maybe you need to re-examine some of your plans right now and your goals. And uh, maybe you want to explore new things, but you have to finish up old matters first. Uh, well, yes, every, everybody has to do that. It also can be that this is a good time for you to take a better look at your career. Capricorn rules career, and your ruler Mercury is there. And you may want to make some changes, or it can be in your career that your company is making some changes. Uh, because corporations, government agencies, and institutions have to do that as they face or as they try to reconcile their budgets for the new year. Uh, because there's got to be downsizing. And um, the, the reason why is, you know, if you're going to have expansion, you have to have enough demand for that expansion. You can't just say, hey, I'm going to expand. Well, if there's not any customers out there, you're going to lose money. So it can be that demand is waning in one way or another. And uh, you have to adjust to that and maybe slow down a little bit, Virgo. But it wouldn't be anything wrong with that. This is the holidays. You could get a little bit more rest. And if you do, then you wouldn't need to worry so much because Virgos worry a lot. And maybe there isn't as much to worry about as you think, Virgo. Maybe you need to step back and ask yourself what you're doing. If you're doubting too many people, or if you're not trusting anybody right now, 
Uh, that may not be good. However, with Neptune and Saturn opposing your sun sign and the sun, new moon, and Mars squaring your sun sign, there is an imposter somewhere in your life, Virgo. And, uh, and they're phony. And they're good at playing the game. They're only a figurehead. And they think very well of themselves. I mean, you, you can tell phonies, uh, they're their own number one fan. <laughs> They don't want to talk about what they've done. They just want to talk about how great they are. <laughs> and so that's a clue <laughs> and, and that, that, you know, uh, Virgos, Virgos like to go by the evidence. Uh, Virgo rules accounting. They like to count. They like to make sure things add up. And um, instead, of, instead of concentrating on the minute details, I think that this is a very good time for you to go back and just, just take an accounting of, okay, where are you, Virgo? Where are you right now? Where do you want to be next year? Are you clinging so much to the past? Or do you have such a lack of confidence that you don't have any plans for the future? That's crazy. Everybody should have plans for the future. Next year's going to be a great year. That's because two of the four eclipses are in an air sign, Libra, which rules partnership. And then Jupiter is going into Gemini, another air sign, for a whole year from the summer of next, from next summer to the, the following summer. I mean, everybody's going to lighten up Virgo. You're going to have a chance to do that, too. A lot of people are going to go back to having the kind of fun they had when they were kids. All I'm saying is, you know, what are you doing? Spending all your time worrying? Uh, because you, you've got to make some plans to have fun, bro. I, I, give yourself a little Christmas present of something that you're looking forward to that is just fun. And go do it. <laughs> that would be a great way to start the year. Okay, what does it mean to a Libra? Well, Libra. This is a time, Libra, when um, there are very few planets in... Um, well, in fact, I don't think there's any. Yes. Um, Mercury and Pluto are in Capricorn. That is um, a cardinal sign. But that's the only cardinal sign that has any planets in it. And those two planets square your sun, Libra. And um, one of them is Pluto, which rules people in high places, in large corporations, government agencies, or institutions. Uh, people who have sort of uh, are at the top or in upper management in one way or another and Mercury is there as well and they are squaring your sun. <clears throat> this may be a time, Libra, when you have to sort of readjust your sights involving your career and even involving retirement. Uh, and you know, Libra, there, there's... I think that you're going to have to decide to take it a little bit more easy. And the reason why is you may be feeling as if you want to sort of come into your own, do things more your own way, and not other people's. And uh, Lib Libras are not fighters. They're not out there being aggressive and uh, over overdoing things. But um, generally, Lib Libras like to get along with people. They're good at compromise and diplomacy. And, um, you know, they sort of want to see peaceful situations, and they tend to work at making that happen. So Libra, you're good at that, and you're loaded with charm. But you know, Libra, you should extend, you should give or lend some of your talents to your own needs right now. Not to the company's needs, uh, not to the influential friends you might have and their needs, but you should be looking a little bit more at yourself. You may as well, because people in, in upper management in, are looking out for themselves and not necessarily for you. And so this is just a time when you need to sort of close some doors or, or close some windows or, you know, try to concentrate on your own thoughts and your own desires. And um, I know this is a little bit strange since you're signed is ruled by Venus, and Venus rules love. But how much time do you spend being good to yourself and loving yourself? That is not the same as playing the game and uh, always strutting your stuff and you know throwing your big ego out there for everybody to see. I'm not talking about that. 
All I'm saying is, can you be a little more gentle on yourself? Uh, it, how would you like to maybe get a little bit more rest sometimes? Or take life easy? Or just en enjoy simple things? Libras like simple things. And uh, Libras are extremely artistic. It rules art. Uh, how much time do you spend enjoying that, Libra? Because you would enjoy it. Uh, or, or just decorating, just doing things, you know. Uh, Libras have a fantastic color eye. In other words, they, they can use their eye, I don't know how they do this, but they can look at two different shades of beige, and um, or they can look at ten different shades of beige, and they could tell you the hue or the or the tone of every single one of them. You know, a pink beige, a yellow beige, a brown beige. They, they can tell you that. I don't know how they do it. Uh, but that comes from having a fantastic color eye. And so how are you using your own talents for your own sake, Libra? That's all I'm saying. Is, uh, you, may, you may want to feel liberated simply by doing something that is creative right now for yourself or for your home. You know, something that just makes things nicer. And so I hope that you try that, Libra. Uh, because as I said, people in high places and that could be people who are just figureheads. They're just placeholders. They're trying to hold on to their place because maybe they haven't been playing the game very successfully lately. Maybe they're worried about their own skin. But uh, I don't think you should worry about them, Libra. Uh, they got where they are. Let them handle it. It's too late, actually, for them. Uh, so don't jump in where angels fear to tread, Libra. It won't do you any good. Uh, just try to concentrate a little bit more on making yourself happy. And uh, love's in there somewhere, Libra. I know it is. Okay, what does it mean to a Scorpio? Well, Scorpio. This is a time, Scorpio, with Venus in your sign that you can be in the mood for love. And that's really nice because Saturn and Neptune in Pisces are trining your sun. And uh, Neptune... It rules dreams, and it rules high idealism, and it's trining Venus in your own sign. So, Scorpio, this can be a time when you are sort of looking for the ideal person. Uh, I, I don't think that they're around, but the fact that you are looking for an ideal person it can be that you are, that you are looking for people who are, are, are worthy of your love, because you have the love planet in your sign. And so you're looking for good people to love. And you may be also looking at things that you love. And by that I mean it can be the kind of work you do. Maybe you love your job. Or it can be that you have interests beyond your work and you'd like to concentrate more on that because you sort of, you know, other things interest you too that you're involved with. So you could... Uh, you could expand. I mean, Venus rules partnership, and it's in your sign. And it isn't often that a Scorpio slows down enough to even think about partnership. Scorpio rules discipline. It rules the military, and it rules medicine and life and death situations. But um, among all those things, uh, everyday people still need to eat, and they still need to take care of each other. And they still need to enjoy simple things, uh, simple pleasures. So why don't you slow down and enjoy that, Scorpio? Uh, this is a wonderful time to do it. And in the meantime, you probably are going to be able to make a long-delayed, that's Saturn, dream come true. That's Neptune in Pisces. And this would be exactly the right time to do it, Scorpio, while Venus is in your sun. And the reason why is that Scorpio's are very quiet about their own feelings, which they hardly ever discuss with anybody. And um, and it does. It's a sign that rules secrecy. But um, if you are, if you are, if you have some some person or something in your heart that you absolutely treasure, you may never have told anybody about that. 
But what are you going to do? Keep treasuring it? Or are you going to do something about that? Scorpio, you have Venus in your sign. It's not Mars. It's not the Sun. It's not the Moon. It's not Jupiter. It is Venus. <laughs> and Venus rules partnership. So if there is a way that you could maybe find, find a way, and, and I would say be direct, uh, that's the shortest route, is just to be direct. And uh, if it's in a personal relationship, then express yourself or do something that doesn't leave any doubt about how you feel. Or if it's a business relationship where you want to get something up and running in a business, okay, look, look for exactly the right person, which Scorpios take their time looking for the right people. And if you see somebody and you want to sort of start in a business thing, that's, that's just a very good time to do it. Um, your judgment would be keen, uh, but not calculating. See, it wouldn't be a sharp judgment. If Mars was in your sign, it would be a sharp judgment. But uh, this isn't a time. You know, your sign, Mars rules sharp instruments. And, 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 you know, surgeons save lives, that's great, by cutting things out. But this isn't a time for you to cut anything out, Scorpio. This is a time for you to reveal what's really in your heart and express it. Show it. Prove it. Because you will, believe it or not, you will find exactly the right way to do that. You will be successful. You have Neptune and Saturn, which rules long-held things, trining your sun. They're not going to be there forever, Scorpio. And Venus is going to move on, too. Uh, this is your time. And uh, you don't have anything to be afraid of. You already know what you're doing. You already know how you feel. This is just the time to prove it. Speak up. Do what you need to do. Um, it isn't just that the stars are with you, which they are. Uh, it, it's that this is the right time for love. And it won't always be like that. Our lives change, but not now. And perhaps you have been waiting a very long time. You just don't need to wait any longer. So do what you need to do, Scorpio. You'll be successful. Okay, what does it mean to a Sagittarian? Oh, Sagittarius, the new moon was in your sign yesterday. So you can be sort of filled with light right now, Sagittarius, and energy because Mars was there as well. However, remember I said this is a time of feast or famine, and the reason why is because Saturn and Neptune in Pisces were squaring that sun, new moon, and Mars in your sign yesterday. And, and so that means that somebody's got a stubborn attitude about something. And um, it could be somebody who's really good at playing the game, you know, at claiming success for things they never did. But they can somehow be connected to it so they can claim that success as their own, although it was someone else that earned the rewards for it, actually, by quietly doing the work. Or it could be that you yourself are a person who has been quietly doing an awful lot of work because Mars is an energetic planet and it's it's in your sign and so um, Sagittarius for one thing I think you should sort of cool down <laughs> during the holidays and you know relax a little bit more if you can you don't need to be in a hurry you don't need to be mad at anybody you might find that people um, Sagittarians always come up with sort of intelligent conversation or intelligent answers to things because Sagittarians know a lot about, uh, uh, or they at least know a little bit about a lot of topics. Uh, they're readers and they generally like to keep up on the news. And so uh, people could be asking for your opinions or they could be wanting you to join them on some very serious effort of their own. And all I'm saying is there's only 24 hours in a day, Sagittarius. How much time do you want to spend on other people's ideas at the sacrifice of following your own? Don't you want to follow your own ideas, Sagittarius? Isn't it about time? It is. And if, if you're going to do one very important thing throughout the holidays now, 
It should be to plan, to make plans for your own goals for next year. And, and you should really either write them down or write them out at least and take a look at those and you know make a duplicate copy because you would want to check next year around your birthday to see how much of that you accomplished. Because uh, you, this was a new moon that could involve some putting you under some kind of pressure uh, to make a new start that has universal appeal. And all I'm saying is check the track record of whoever you're talking to or what you want to do and make sure that whoever you advance with is worthy of your efforts. Are they as smart as you? Or are, are they, do they have a special talent that complements your own? That's always good. It doesn't mean they're like you, but they, they're pretty good at what they do anyway, and so are you. Uh, th that would be nice. Um, you don't always have to be the boss. Uh, but when somebody has Mars in their sign, generally they are the boss. <laughs> or they express themselves very vehemently. <laughs> and all I'm saying is it won't do you too much good because Saturn and Neptune are squaring the planets in your sign right now. And there are no planets in the other fire signs to back your sign up. This wasn't a new moon that was backed up. Um, and, and that's why it's sort of feast or famine right now, because it had harsh aspects to it. And all I'm saying is, you know, you can still advance. You have plenty of energy. It's just you have to be a little careful to watch where you walk or who you're talking to or how much time you spend on something. And does it have anything to do, I mean, are you just spinning your wheels or does it have something to do with your own goals? Because that's what you should be focusing on because the solar eclipse in Aries this spring is going to light a fire under you, Sagittarius, but are you going to be ready for it? You don't want to get roasted. <laughs> you want to go on, and this is a time to plan for it, so good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Capricorn? Well, Capricorn, this is a time, Capricorn, when you can be thinking very seriously about uh, where you've been for the last 20 years and what you've been doing, and, um, and you could probably detail every day or every month or every year, you would know what you were, had been doing in the last 20 years while Pluto was in your sign. And it is getting ready to leave your sign now. The reason you could be thinking about those things is because Mercury is also in your sign right now and it's retrograde. So you could be having a lot of thoughts about your past efforts right now, Capricorn, and uh, particularly about your past career or the um, talents that you have developed in your career over the years. And you certainly have. Uh, wherever you started 20 years ago, you're not there now. You're, you're really much more secure than you were 20 years ago. And um, I think Capricorn, believe it or not, since Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus are still trining your sun, I think that you can be somewhat flabbergasted <laughs> or even very surprised at how secure you are. I mean, uh, other people have a lot bigger worries than you've got, Capricorn. And the reason why is that maybe some people were not as careful in their long-term gain, gain, in their long-term goals or in their career plans as you have been. And so uh, you could be in a rather secure spot right now, even surprised at how secure you really are, both emotionally and financially, or, or in business, or, you, or your career is probably uh, either it's where you want it to be, or you can see the potential to go further in it now as we are about to enter the new year. And that is the direction you should be looking in, Capricorn, because there are two new moons in your sign. There weren't any new moons this year. Well, this year was, the whole year, Capricorn, you'd have to have spent this year getting ready for next year <laughs> because we're going to have a new moon in your sign in January and another one next December. That's two of them in 2024. Uh, whatever you're starting in January, you probably are going to be, I hope, quite happy with how far you get uh, by December when there is a second new moon in your sign next year. Um, but I would say that you are at a, um, not exactly a jumping off place because uh, 
That would be impulsive. And Capricorns are never impulsive. They think about everything and plan it first. And then they're cautious on top of that. Uh, but uh, Capricorn, there's nothing holding you back. Not really. You could say, oh, it's my age. Oh, it's my health. Oh, oh, it's that I don't have any chances to advance in my career. Oh, I've got to do things for other people. Well, so does the rest of the human race, Capricorn. Those are not the kind of things that ought to stop you. You, you, you're a human being with a very careful attitude, and uh, you have proven your success over time. It doesn't mean that you were, rose to the top of a corporation. It meant that um, if anybody is capable of making steady efforts, it's a Capricorn. They persevere. But they don't give up. It doesn't mean, it, it, not every Capricorn wants to reach the top, but they want to reach the end. And you would want to reach the end of a career, and you would want to have enough money to live on for the rest of your life by the time you got there. And you know, Capricorn, I have no doubt that's going to work out just fine for you. But you need to start thinking about uh, what you want to do with yourself next year, because these two moon, new moons in your sign are going to be very effective in getting you into something new. And uh, no excuses is what I'm saying, Capricorn. So uh, think about that. Okay, what does it mean to an Aquarian? Well, Aquarius. This is a time Aquarius says there are no planets in the air signs right now. And Sagittarius is where the new moon was. And it was actually sextiling your sun. Okay, so the sun, new moon, and Mars in Sagittarius were sextiling your sun. And... Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, which were squaring them, are right ahead of your sun sign. And so you could be somewhat caught in the middle, or, or you could be an interested bystander or an onlooker to a controversial situation, or even to other people who are good at playing the game and are, and are getting caught at that. In other words, they're imposters, or they're figureheads, or they're placeholders. But, you know, good at talking the talk, but not doing anything about walking the walk. And these people are going to be found out. Even if they're always careful to be seen in the right place at the right time with the right people, they don't have much to show for their life's efforts. They're always claiming success for other people's efforts. And you could be right in the middle, Aquarius, between these three planets in Sagittarius and the two in Pisces. Your sign is in the middle of that. And that's a pretty harsh square of five planets, half the planets in the heavens. And uh, yours is a fixed sign. Venus in Scorpio is squaring your sign, meaning that there isn't quite as much money around as you thought there would be, Aquarius, or else your costs have been rather high lately. And... Perhaps, you know, if you've been wishing that Santa would bring you something pretty expensive, I think you have to go back and ask Santa to lower their sights a little bit. Because something may not be as affordable as you once thought it would be. Simply because you could be caught with higher costs or higher bills right now, which would have been somewhat unavoidable. They're not your fault. But they still would have been around. And so you could be plagued by that a little bit. And not able to find relief. You would have had to simply pay the bills. Um, and not been happy about that. Um, but you're going to have a great year next year, Aquarius. And so um, we don't need everything in life. Uh, if you can find some time to be happy with people that you love. Or animals that you love. Friends that you have. Or... Um, even co-workers somewhere, um, take a moment for some happy time right now, Aquarius. And um, it depends on what makes you happy. Uh, not everything, happiness is not something that, it's, it's not bland, it's not common. It's unusual or unique to every person and what their needs are and what their talent is. Okay? So um, I, I have a brother who uh, lives down south, and uh, 
uh, he's a minister. And the thing that makes him happiest, I mean, he's a hard worker and, uh, and he's, you know, he's, he's financially secure. Uh, but my brother he really enjoys working in soup kitchen, kitchens on every holiday, particularly Christmas, feeding the poor. That makes him happy. And so I'm giving that as an example, Aquarius, because Aquarians have unique, unusual things that they're interested in. And so something makes you happy, Aquarius. All I'm saying is whatever does make you happy, why don't you quit sticking around people that are sort of not agreeing with each other right now and um, just turn your back on them and do something you love. And it doesn't always cost money. It has to, love and expressing your, your heart, that's the same thing. Whatever you've got in your heart is what you love. And express that, Aquarius, and forget all these other people that are either phonies or, or they're just um, being a little bit bossy right now. Forget them and do what you want. And... Um, even if it's just something so simple, no one would suspect that you would like doing it. If you like it, do it. And then you'll be happy. Okay, what does it mean to a Pisces? Well, Pisces. This is a time, Pisces, when, um, you know, the new moon and the sun and Mars in Sagittarius were all squaring Saturn and Neptune in your sign, Pisces. And... Um, Neptune is the strongest planet in the heavens because it's the only one at home in the sign it rules. And yet, uh, in between this harsh square of these five planets, immutable signs, are two other planets. And they are um, both sextiling your sun, Pisces, and they are Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn, which sextiles the sign of Pisces, and it um, is right ahead of the sign of uh, Sagittarius. And so uh, Pisces, I think you can, this is a time of feast or famine for you. You can either take the high road and, and do what makes you happy or really try very hard to make a dream come true right now while Venus and Scorpio is trying your sun. That would be really fortunate for you, Pisces. It would work, whatever. If you've had some long-held dream and you've just been wishing on a star, hoping it would come true, uh, I don't think anything's stopping you now, Pisces. Venus in Scorpio is trining your sun. And, and you have Neptune, the strongest planet in the heavens, and your ruler in your sun sign. It's just the question is, are you real serious or not? And the reason I ask that question is because Saturn is a serious planet. And it's in your sign. And it's being squared by Mars. Somebody wants to distract you right now, Pisces. Somebody wants you to pay attention to them. It could be somebody who's good at playing the game, who's only a figurehead or a placeholder, or has a very big ego and is always claiming success for the work others do. It could be that person, because that's represented by the three planets in Sagittarius and in your sign as well. People who can be phonies and, you know, not really the way they project themselves. You could be concerned with that, Pisces, but why bother? Just why bother? Don't, don't turn your back on those people, Pisces, because Mercury and Pluto is sextiling your sun, and Venus and Scorpio is trining your sun. Well, Mercury and Pluto represent people in sort of upper management or with authority who, um, who tend to think very well of you. You know, sextile represents opportunity. And so they, they would think well of either giving you a better opportunity or uh, just seeing what you're doing right now. And if you're not one of the people that are playing the game, if you're really sincere about what you're doing, I think you're going to get some additional backing on that. I think there will be some sort of career advancement or there will be some sort of opening, serious one, uh, that you could benefit from. Pisces, and that's what you should be paying attention to when you're not paying attention to love and making a dream come true. 
but you should be doing that too because Venus in Scorpio is trying in your sun, which means, Pisces, there is the opportunity for more money to be coming your way. And it would be sincerely felt and I think well-deserved uh, because Venus is trining Saturn. Uh, that's, that's what makes that trine so strong. It isn't just that Venus is a good planet in Scorpio, but it, it is that uh, Venus is trining Saturn in your own sign and trining Neptune. Venus trying Neptune is high idealism, um, really making a dream come true. That's, that's possible now. And I, I'd strike while the iron's hot, uh, Pisces. If you have a big dream, let somebody know about it. And be direct. Let them know. Uh, because uh, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Uh, I had an old friend once who said to me, um, a dream isn't real until you make it come true. And that's true. Either a dream is somewhere out in the ethers or you're going to make it come true. One or the other. And one of them leads to life and love and happiness. And the other leads to just dreaming. And uh, Neptune, your ruler, is in your sign, but it isn't going to stay there very long. It's going to turn around and go direct and leave and never come back in your lifetime. And so this is a time to make an old dream come true, Pisces. And it may be in some kind of connection to someone who's been around a long time and thinks very well of you, or did in the past. And um, I think you're going to benefit from that. So good luck. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you um, subscribe to my Karen Campbell uh, YouTube channel and tell your friends about that because I'd be happy to send you the show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And if you'd like to read the blog that explains the theme of the show a little bit better, you can read it on my website, starborninstitute.org. And if it says that it's not safe, just hit the advanced button, scroll to the bottom, and then click on the website. It'll open right up. And in the meantime, I want to end the program by suggesting something to everybody. And it is that as we get closer to the holidays, and I want to wish you Mer Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, I think that this is a very good time for us all to do something uh, that we can do together. And that is count our blessings. Why don't we each sit down just quietly by ourselves and count our blessings? Because no matter how many things go wrong in your life, first of all, the greatest blessing is that you're still here. And that means there's still love in your heart somewhere. And if you count your blessings, those are the riches that you carry with you all your life. And that's what can propel you forward and bring you happiness. So this is a good time for us to be together as the family of man and count our blessings this holiday season. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week. Bye.